Good afternoon, guys. It's a nice rush today. I absolutely adore these kinds of crowds. They signify something truly fascinating. Right now, we are present at Xiaomi, and we have the privilege of review their brand new, and might I say, their first ever car. This is definitely something you don't want to miss out on. For two years, they delayed its release. No one understood why it took so long, because everyone had already started. Huawei had already launched several collaborations. However, they were in no hurry to follow Huawei's lead, because Huawei doesn't have its own factory. It has collaborations with those auto brands that do have one. Xiaomi, however, decided not to repeat. They built their own super high-tech robot factory completely from scratch, which does the assembly of cars with virtually no physical or human power. This means they are dumping all of their competitors on price. They've taken a swing at crazy sports performance and have officially written that the car has passed a moose test at 82 kilometers per hour. That's a very high result. If they write, I tend to trust them, otherwise they will just get eaten up in the courts. So I think the car is going to be very interesting. Let's have a look at it. A total of 27 sensors, LiDAR cameras, there is autopilot, auto parking, built-in video recorder. On the suspension in front of the double wishbone, rear multi-lever, air suspension with height adjustable clearance, two electric motors on all-wheel drive, 670 horsepower with acceleration of two and eight seconds to 100. These are the handles. Yeah, they don't move, it's just a sensor. Unfortunately, we don't have auto doors here. Only the door closer, but it works instantly, look. By the way, this model has virtually no gaps. Everything is quite even, you see. However, someone has already posted on the internet that there are some gaps, but I can see that yes, in some places, not everywhere, not everywhere is very even. This is due to the fact that this car is not assembled by hand, it is assembled by robots. Virtually all cars that are assembled by robots today, such as Tesla, yes? They all come with some gaps. You'll have to put up with it, but you get a much lower price tag due to robots than from those auto brands that assemble by hand. However, there is an upside to robot assembly. Where robots are assembled, there are no big faults, such as incorrectly welded, under-tightened bolts and the like. It just can't happen. 2,200 kilograms curb weight, one pane of glass. It's a very high quality fake leather. It's microfiber. And inside, unfortunately, it's plastic. 26 Xiaomi speakers. The seat is Napa leather, both front and back. There's also adjustable side support. And the passengers on the right, unfortunately, there's no side support adjustment. And if here is an excellent material and here on top, then here is already plastic. Front ventilated and heated seats, rear heated only, no massages. 108 centimeters tall. I got down to the bottom, I sit straight, I reach the steering wheel and I have four more fingers in front of my knee. I like that already. Let's just lean back a little bit. A little bit backwards, move forward and I can reach the steering wheel. Good job. That's what it means to bide your time and look at other people's mistakes. Well done. The length of the seat cushion. The buttons on the steering wheel are very good. Really well done. It's a leather steering wheel. Here is the camera control, as I can understand. And these are the driving modes. 
Yeah, and the dashboard comes out. Look, I love this design. I really like it. Nice screen. Everything's good. The materials are decent. You press the start-stop button, and the screen rotates. Now we can see the dashboard screen. Let's check for squeaks. Cement. Okay. There's a little bit here. And there's a little bit here. Look, B minus. And I like the way the dashboard flips up like this. Adds a little bit of technology to this design. It's simple, minimalist, but it's very well done. The screen seems a little big to me. However, screen lovers will say it's fine, but I think it's too big. It could be smaller. And unfortunately, it doesn't turn towards the driver. It's just a huge projector on the windshield, 56 inches. And there's an option to turn on a big map, 3K screen, 16 inches. Greatest color reproduction. Everything works very quickly. The Xiaomi app is here. You can go to their store and select any apps that are available. Swipe from top to bottom, we get into hotkey mode. Left to right, nothing. Bottom to top, nothing. There should be a big map here. Wow. This is the third screen after Lixiang and Tesla that is above and beyond. Better than anywhere. Better than all Huawei screens. I mean in a Huawei car. You can also change the temperature this way. Yeah, with your finger. All of you know that Xiaomi company produces a large number of different gadgets for smart home. From electronic locks, refrigerators and washing machines to home cameras and sound amplifiers. Their lineup also includes home theaters, vacuum cleaners, kettles and humidifiers. In addition, they offer laptops, tablets, smartphones, watches and headphones. All of these devices are seamlessly integrated into a unified ecosystem along with a voice assistant. Xiaomi's smart home also has a voice assistant. For example, you can ask it to turn on the air conditioner to the right temperature. You can ask it to turn the lights on or off. You can tell the robot vacuum cleaner to start working. Not only that, you can ask it what the air temperature is. So the car is connected to this single ecosystem. When you're in your apartment, using the voice assistant of the smart home, you can control the car. You can ask it to pull out of the parking lot and drive up to the main entrance. You can set any temperature, warm up the car, open the windows, open the trunk. Crazy. You can right in the car control your air conditioning in your apartment. Turn on the lights there and everything else. The car is completely connected to the ecosystem. You can open the front doors in the apartment. Or, for example, turn on the climate control. If it's hot in the apartment, you drive up to the house, turn on the climate control, and enter the cool apartment. You can also download an app of a specific camera in the apartment. And right there on the go, watch the view from the cameras in your apartment or in your country house. Naturally, everything is very fast. No lag at all. Yes, the display just flies. Here you can insert different widgets, depending on what you downloaded. The material here is something like denim, and it's soft. It's nice to the touch. Magnetic. Okay, this is not denim material. In the Max version, the material is Alcantara. Material-wise, it's pretty good. I honestly thought it would be worse. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised by the materials. All the plastic, it's all smooth. If it's anywhere, it's smooth. The only thing is that on the cards at the bottom, it's so rough. Touch. No, a live button. Emergency, SOS and cameras. They put three buttons here. Blower strength. Air temperature. And start-stop. It's metal. Two cup holders and wireless charging. 50 watts on each side with cooling. The inside is covered in Alcantara. The Max version has more buttons. As well as controlling the blower strength and temperature, there's also air suspension control. That's the active anti-wing. And suspension height control. There's a connector underneath the tablet. And this is where you can plug in additional equipment. There are also connectors on the side and on the top. You can connect additional equipment on the left, right, and top. On the left side, there is a mount. The exact same mount on the right mount for equipment, cameras, coasters, and generally various devices that they will start to come up with later for this car. Unfortunately, the armrest isn't very big. The fridge has taken up all the space. 
This is where the refrigerator. There's finally a refrigerator in sedans. The glove compartment opens with a button. That's not interesting. I thought there would be a tablet connection like in Zeker, and you could set a password. But no, it's just a button. But it's big. It's covered in fabric. This one's got leatherette too. Well done. And there's a little box for the driver, covered in cloth. The door card has special places for phones. They're rubberized. We get out of the car with this button. There is a very interesting place under the console. Here you can insert a variety of gadgets from Xiaomi. Under the console, you can install three types of equipment so far. Amplifier, walkie-talkies with a flashlight. All metal, heavy, strong, looks like, and odors. There's only one spot under the console, and it needs to be occupied by one thing, respectively. And it would be a shame to just take it for odors and miss the opportunity to use these devices. They thought of that. So the same odors can be put into the armrest in a device like this. It's just that the odor will not come from the climate. It will just come from here. Then there's the possibility of installing something from that. They also promise that in the future, there will be a lot more different devices that can be installed there. And here are the different interesting nitty-gritty things that can be connected in this car at the moment. A tablet that you can hang in the back. This is the thing that hangs underneath the tablet. And here are the mechanical buttons to control the climate control and everything else. Interesting ambient lighting that hangs on the sides. Smartphone holders. They're metal. Everything is very qualitatively made. This device hangs on top of the tablet. It smiles. You can set the pupils. You can also turn on the time, weather and things like that in these screens. It's a mad rush today. Just moved the seat under me, immediately a man jumped in and knocked my settings down. I'll tell you, take my word for it, there's not a lot of room in the back of the car. I mean, I was like this. I had one fist. One fist. There's practically no room above my head. Two fingers. However, the backrest tilt, although not adjustable, is comfortable. It's about average. Better than the Tesla Model 3. It's more comfortable to sit in. However, of course, I'd like a little bit of tilt in the back. But for some trips of an hour and a half to two hours, no problem. The armrest is very basic. Two cup holders. Nothing fancy. And the most important thing is that tablets hang here. You can also move the front seat right on the tablet. You can look at the map, operate the climate control. These tablets aren't just for entertainment. They're fully integrated with the car. The tablet is very fast, smooth, the top-of-the-line tablet from Xiaomi. And you cannot necessarily hang a Xiaomi tablet you can hang an iPad. In the Apple iPad, you download the Xiaomi program and it integrates immediately with this car. That's cool. The light bulb on the button, it's not touch. Now that's an interesting handle. Now that's interesting. You can also connect karaoke, microphones to the tablets in the back. And therefore have fun. The Chinese love to sing karaoke. It's just part of their culture for them. That's why all cars today have microphones or the ability to connect those microphones. This Pro version has a slightly bigger trunk than the Max. 500 liters, give or take. It has a net, a cigarette lighter, a hook. and a large compartment at the bottom. Well, it's like this, average trunk. There is an active anti-wing with a downforce of 130 kilograms. And this is the max version. The pro version doesn't have it. This has a slightly smaller trunk, 490 liters. Yeah, and a smaller compartment. The headlights are tricky, four lenses, and they're adjustable. The angle of illumination is 160 degrees. 19 wheels, there's one of these and one of these. 45 profile. 20th wheels, 45th profile now. Pirelli P0 tires, 245 by 35 R21. 265 by 35 R21 at the back. Brembo brakes, disc brakes, perforated, ventilated. This is where I'd like to make a commendation. Look at the choice of colors. 
and the choice of interior too. 105 liters under the hood, that's a huge niche. The maximum version has a 101 kilowatt hour battery. They promise a CLTC of about 800 kilometers. CLTC, CLTC, divide by 50% cold winter. I'm sure a lot of people have a question. Why does a car weighing 2,200 kilograms with only 670 horses accelerate two and seven to 100, two and eight rounded up? Aerodynamic drag coefficient zero, point 195. This car is a blade. Based on the sporty performance they claimed and the handling they claimed, I really want to take it for a test drive. As hard as we've tried, so far it's just not possible. You have to agree, taking it for a 15-minute drive is nothing. It has to be felt. It has to be tested. I am very interested, first of all, to understand what kind of noise insulation there is at such a weight and such a price. It is very interesting. Although, to be honest, there is information that it is not below average. There is information, but I want to double check that. So we'll see you a little bit later on for a test drive. It has a lot of interesting safety systems, by the way, that are interesting to check out as well. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for your attention. Subscribe to the channel. Take care. I'll see you all again.